Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we go artifact hunting. We're also going to grab some fullerene, which will give us the access to that beautiful super coolant. Now, the first thing to consider when we're going to get our fullerene is the path. You can see here the distance in hexes is about 10 tiles. That's not too shabby. When we go back to old Fertilera, we happen to have a rocket that we are no longer using. And it's with our Radbolt engine. And our Radbolt generator is still doing very well. We have 77,000 Radbolts, even though we haven't taken off in quite some time. But looking in here, you can see the oxygen's gotten up to 23 kilos thanks to the oxalite overwrite bug. Not a single carbon dioxide in sight, but every time they come in here, they get the, the ear pops. I think we're going to design a new living area, and this one made for a little bit more comfort. Something to note, though. You don't have to go in here and deconstruct every single item. You'll notice when Starstream finishes deconstructing this, it gives us all of our deconstructed materials. It's like they deconstruct everything at once, right down to the joyous seeds and the polluted dirt. But now for the rocket itself. First things first is we're not going to need any battery power. So we can definitely remove this. And if we don't need any battery power, we surely don't need any solar panels. So we can get rid of all of these. Isn't that just the cutest little rocket you've ever seen? Now let's get to the business of adding some modules. At a minimum, we know we want the Spacefarer module. That goes without being said. We could get away with the Solo Spacefarer nose cone. But when you compare the two, the Solo Spacefarer nose cone takes up a 3 height, the Spacefarer module 4 height. Plus you have to consider that the Spacefarer module would save you two on the basic nose cone. So I think the net difference in height is probably 3. But for only 3 height, you can't go wrong with all the benefits that the Spacefarer module will give you. And that being plenty of rooms to include the Great Hall, etc, etc. But the other reason is because we can't use the basic nose cone. When you go to the star map and you click on any of these asteroids or oceans or whatever they are, you can see that harvesting the resources requires a rocket equipped with a drill cone. Now, I don't know how you harvest water with a drill cone, but that's neither here nor there. All right, here's our drill cone complete with graphical bug. Additionally, we have the large cargo module and the artifact transport module. And you can see we've used just enough height to be able to pull this off. Total height of the rocket is 19 out of 20, and that is complete even with the large cargo bay. Now, you could have gone with the standard size cargo bay. It only has a height of 3 compared to the large cargo bay height of 5. But to highlight the difference, I'll show you. The large cargo bay has a capacity of 27 tons. And even with 27 tons of storage capacity, we still have a range of 24 tiles and move at 1.2 tiles per cycle. The standard cargo bay only has a capacity of 12 tons, and it only increases the speed to 1.3 tiles per cycle. Now we could add two cargo bays and give us 24 tons, but we'd still be short of the 27 tons that we would get otherwise. Just to show the example, we'll add another cargo bay and we can watch this rocket speed continue to go down because of the increased rocket burden. And there it is. Now the rocket speed is only 1.1 tiles per cycle and we still don't even get as much storage with a total capacity of 24 tons. And that's because the total module burden of two cargo bays is eight, whereas the total module burden for the large cargo bay is only six. So by far, if you have the space, you go large cargo bay. While the dupes continue to build that, I wanted to show you an addition I made. I think it was in the background of last episode. You may have been able to see it. And we now have Ye old Diamond Press. And it's set up beautifully under this Radbolt generator, which is collecting 222 Radbolts per cycle. And we have it just consistently on. What happens is the Radbolt generator, as soon as it gets 50 Radbolts, shoots the Radbolts into the diamond press. The dupe comes over here, makes some diamond out of refined carbon, and away they go. 
And this is the reason why we need more diamond. We are making mincemeat out of this igneous rock, really taking the heat out of it. You can see here our right side spike has gone all the way down and now it's moving over to the left, as is with our left side spike. And you can see by looking at the steam turbines, that is an absolute ton of power we are generating. One day, once we've taken all the heat out of the magma biome, we'll be relying on just the volcanoes. But for now, we're doing just fine with these geothermal spikes. When I go to last cycle's daily report, you can see the steam turbines by themselves generated 3,900 kilojoules of power. That's more than half of our power generation. What's even more incredible, even though we generated 7,200 kilojoules of power, we used almost 7,140 kilojoules of power for a net difference of only 111. Now this power wasted stat is a little bit different. This has to do with a battery runoff or overproduction in the colony. And the tooltip gives you a good example down here. You can see by the charge loss on the Spartan batteries was three and a half kilojoules itself. Solar panels, when everything else is running, they're not really needed. So that's just complete overproduction. In other news, we added another dupe. Welcome to the colony Moon Racer. Moon Racer enjoys rocketry and suit wearing. She also has a bonus to decorating, but we don't really care about that too much. But the great thing about Moon Racer is she also had Quick Learner. This Quick Learner will allow her to learn her skills even quicker. With the addition of Moon Racer, we're now at 22 total dupes. That means we have two more duplicates to recruit, so we're going to make them good. Now the cargo module acts kind of like the rest of the storage modules do across the colony. When you select it, it gives you the option of what you want to be able to put in it. When we go over here to the gilded asteroid field, we can see there's sedimentary rock, gold, fullerene, refined carbon, and regolith. This is a way for you to pick and choose what you want to pull from. So if we don't want any sedimentary rock, we just don't select sedimentary rock. The difficult thing, though, is until you've discovered some items, they're just not going to appear here in this list. For instance, regolith and fullerene are not on this list. So because of that, we have to select all, which means about half of our large cargo bay is going to be full of sedimentary rock, which we don't necessarily want. But for this first trip, until we actually discover fullerene and discover regolith, we cannot specifically checkmark them. And now it's time to play everybody's favorite game and that's Module Makeover. Let's see what we come up with this time. And here she is with all of her glory. This module has everything your dupe will need to satisfy every drill cone and artifact run. We have nine joyas in here providing a good amount of decor. And that's right, we have the great hall, we have the bedroom, we have the latrine. We even have separate storage bins for dirt, and for oxalite and then we have a refrigerator not being charged because we have berry sludge in it and berry sludge well as we know it doesn't matter what you do to it it's never going off right now we have it set on 10 kilos which normally is 40,000 calories uh, i feel like somebody came in here and ate some berry sludge i mean even the mess table has table salt on it just a wonderful module but with that, I think we can load this bad boy up. Let's go ahead and select Elita as our resident pilot extraordinaire. With her loaded, we just got to set the destination. We are going to this gilded asteroid field right here. Pre-flight launch sequence has began. I love how the engines start to preheat. Even the drill cone starting to spin. Go get some drill cone. Why doesn't Elon Musk's rocket have a drill cone? Hmm. You can see after a launch that because of all the radiation that was dumped back into this nuclear waste, the rad bolt generator collects around 6,000 rad bolts per cycle. So apparently the drill cone also has a drill arm? I don't know. Some notes. You can see the drill cone starts with one ton of diamond. 
I'm assuming this is the sort of diamond-coated blades that it's using to cut into the debris. I don't know. But you can look here. We've already collected the artifact. It's already in the artifact container. And we have 21 tons of cargo capacity remaining. And over here in the notes, it also tells you it's extracting resources at a rate of 7.5 kilos per second. Which, based on the cargo capacity remaining, means we have about five cycles remaining before the drill comb will finish doing its business and collecting all these ingredients. We've started having Ironhide and Optimus send every bit of fossil they find back to Fertilera. And here's the reason why. We've managed to collect about four tons of fossil. When you come down here to the rock crusher, you can make lime out of fossil. Now, it's not a great ratio. 100 kilos of fossil will give you 5 kilos of lime and 95 kilos of sedimentary rock. But either way, it's more lime. And more lime means more steel. So this might make a difference in your decision on the large cargo capacity or the regular cargo capacity cargo container. You can see here, we're done drilling. And we're not done drilling because we're full. We're actually done drilling because we ran out of diamond for the drill cone. I don't believe there's a way to carry more diamond. I think the most you can have is the one ton. It probably also depends on what you're drilling out. I'm not really sure. Either way, we got 20 tons for a one ton worth of diamond. So we'll have to keep playing with this a little bit and seeing what the math turns out to be. Is it always one ton of diamond for 20 tons of cargo? I don't know. Either way, it's time to send Alita home. Change the destination, and away she goes. Something else you plan on keeping an eye on. At the Gilded Asteroid Field, it says the total mass remaining is 34.2 tons. I'm wondering if this mass sort of recovers, or once you mine everything, it's all gone. So Alita has returned from her faithful mission with the drill cone. We ended up with 5 tons of gold and 2 tons of fullerene. We also got 2 tons of refined carbon and regolith and 9 tons of sedimentary rock. Now the question becomes, how do we get the stuff out of it? You can see by just by unchecking it, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't drop it from the large cargo bay. And that's where the solid rocket port unloader comes into play. You can find it in another shipping menu. And it just attaches to the side of your rocket. Once you have the solid rocket port unloader finished, then you just connect it to some shipping rails. For simplicity, we just put a conveyor chute on it so it'll dump everything we want right here. Then we just select what we want to unload. And in this case, we'll just say everything. And here it all comes. Be forewarned though, it's not the fastest machine in the world. It's dropping it off 20 kilos at a time. Over on Smellio, we've made a couple of changes. First, we tapped into this natural gas geyser, put a steel gas pump into it, then pumped it all out. It still has 26 cycles until it becomes active again, but it'll go a long way to helping feed the colony's power requirements. And we're taking that natural gas and going directly into the natural gas generators. The second item is we're about to leave Ironhide here alone. I know, it's a little sad because Ironhide and Optimus have been together since the beginning. But to make his time here a little bit easier, we've given Ironhide an Atmosuit dock. And at first, I was trying to figure out, okay, let me see, I can filter the oxygen from the polluted oxygen and then put it into the Atmosuit dock. That'll require a little bit more power, but it'll be okay. And then I realized, hold on. Over on Fertilera, our oxygen generation is made to keep 30 dupes alive. So we just siphoned a pipe right off of the supply teleporter output. And then on Fertilera, we've just connected the input with one of our primary oxygen lines. Work smarter, not harder, right? So we've assigned Ironhide this cot. We've left him 187 cycles worth of berry sludge. We can send more berry sludge if we need. Not a big deal. He's also got the benefit of a great hall here. And a barracks. We'll probably upgrade this to a comfy bed soon, but it's not a big deal. So as soon as Optimus comes back to go to bed, we'll end up launching Uranus-1 back to Fertilera. I'm going to do some thinking in the background. I'm not pleased with this setup. The idea of dupes living out of the rocket and then working on the planetoid sounds amazing at first. 
but there's a lot of flaws in it. First, you really have to use a full gas pump. These mini gas pumps just do not fill the Atmos suit docks quick enough. But with the full gas pump, it requires real power generation. And unless you have a lot of solar panels, the power outlet footing with the three solar panels attached is not quite cutting it. You could put a dupe wheel in here, but then you'd have to sacrifice something like the water cooler, and then you wouldn't have the great hall. There's a lot of give and takes that we could make, and I'm going to do some more thinking on it, because I really like the idea of dupes living in the rocket and then working no matter where they need to work. No matter how the planetoid is. Whether it's full of magma or it's just a swamp. The other sort of problems are a little weirder. When the dupes go looking for food out on Smelliel, when it's time to eat, they'll grab anything that's laying around. Whether that be fish fillet or bog buckets. And then they'll bring it inside the rocket. And that's why we've got a bunch of swamp charred hearts sitting here. Occasionally they're rot, and then they'll produce polluted oxygen, just causing more problems. And this is despite the fact that they have all the berry sludge they need sitting in this refrigerator. But the issue is, they don't know what's inside the rocket when they're sitting on the planetoid. As another example, you can see here that we have a warning of beds. Because we only have one bed here. Even though Optimus is assigned to sleep inside the rocket, they don't know that, so we're constantly be giving the warning. Now this, of course, is still early access for Spaced Out, so it's not a huge deal. But it's definitely something to keep an eye out if you decide to do the same thing for your colonies. We're just going to go ahead and call Optimus back by clicking on crew. And now that he's in there, we can get to the business of launching him back home. This is going to sting just a little bit for the colony. Really need to consider another location for that rocket platform for future missions. And with that, Ironhide's like, oh man, now I'm alone. Since Alita's return, we've went ahead and built our Molecular Forge. The Molecular Forge allows you to make super coolant, fullerene, insulation, and visco gel. We're here to make some super coolant. Requires a little bit of gold, a little bit of petroleum, and just a tiny bit of fullerene. We'll start off by making 10, and of course we connected it with an auto sweeper. Other dupes will have to come by and drop off the petroleum and gold. You can see on the Molecular Forge, there's no way to pass in the petroleum via liquid pipe, so it's got to be done manually. Something to be warned about though, the Molecular Forge takes 1600 watts. So we've just tied it in directly, just like we have with our metal refineries and our glass forge. I almost forgot our artifact. And here it is, the small obelisk. We just click remove, and it falls all the way down here. Which is, that's not a big deal, though. Because we have our small little museum set up here. For all of our beautiful artifacts. Select the pedestal. Pick the obelisk. And it'll soon be delivered. And there she is in all of her glory. Sitting right next to the mighty coffee cup. Now eventually we're going to have more artifacts and we have spaces to put them. Maybe we'll throw them into some dupe condos. And there it is, 100 kilos of super coolant. Absolutely beautiful. The only thing that would be better is if we were making visco gel. But for that, we need iso resin. And that will come in another episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. Talk to you soon.